This ship can lift an entire oil platform, over 20,000 tons, in a single, breathtaking move. In Inside the Megalift, Pioneering Spirit explained, we go beyond legend to reveal how one vessel, as wide as a football field and longer than two Airbus A380 jets, promises to solve the North Sea's staggering backlog of decaying platforms in days, not months. Hundreds wait offshore, each costing colossal time and risk to remove, until now. But how does this steel giant stay steady while the sea rages, and what secret engineering sets it apart from anything afloat? The answer starts with why one piece really changes everything. Out in the North Sea, a silent crisis is building. More than 1,180 offshore installations, giant steel and concrete platforms, some the size of skyscrapers, wait for their final journey home. These are not just relics of the oil age. They are industrial fortresses, weighing anywhere from 10,000 to over 30,000 tons, battered by decades of wind and salt water. The OSPAR Commission counts over 1,350 installations in the North Sea region, but only about 170 have been removed so far. That leaves over 1,000 platforms still standing, and every year, the backlog grows. Decommissioning these structures is not just an engineering headache. It's a race against time, cost, and the elements. Piece-by-piece -piece removal has been the industry's go-to method for decades. It's a slow-motion marathon. First, months of hazardous waste removal. Then, workers slice the platform into modules, each weighing hundreds or thousands of tons, before cranes lift them off one by one. The Northwest Hutton Project, for example, needed 22 separate lifts just to clear the topsides, plus 224 sub-sea cuts to break the jacket into 58 pieces. That campaign stretched from 2008 to 2012 bus, with the largest module weighing in at 2,800 tons. For a single platform, the visible dismantling phase alone can drag on for 9 to 20 months. And that's just one. There are hundreds more in line. The financial strain is relentless. In 2024, Operators spent a record 2.4 billion pounds on North Sea decommissioning, with forecasts showing 27 billion more to be spent over the next decade. On average, removing a steel platform here costs over $22 million, more than twice the price of similar work in Southeast Asia. The Tyra campaign in Denmark moved 50,000 tons of steel in over 30 separate lifts requiring more than 800,000 man-hours just for preparation. Meanwhile, well-plugging and abandonment, the first step in the process, can take 30 days and 2.7 million pounds per well, with hundreds of wells still waiting their turn. But the real bottleneck is not just money or manpower. It's time. The North Sea Transition Authority estimates that at least 300 wells need to be decommissioned every year just to keep up, yet only a fraction are completed. Specialized heavy lift vessels are in short supply, and as contractors chase longer-term jobs abroad, the risk grows that costs will soar even higher. If the industry cannot clear the backlog, operators face mounting fines and the threat of even tighter regulations. For decades, the only answer was to keep chipping away, piece by piece, weather window by weather window. But with a wall of aging platforms looming offshore, each one a logistical puzzle and a financial drain, the old approach is running out of road. The North Sea's decommissioning backlog is not just a technical challenge. It's a ticking clock, demanding a new way to clear the decks before the costs spiral out of control. Pioneering spirit isn't just the world's largest construction vessel. It's a purpose-built tool, engineered for a single challenge, lifting entire oil platform topsides in one go. The ship itself stretches 382 meters from bow to stern, longer than four soccer fields lined up end to end. But the real secret lies in its twin bow slot, a gaping opening 122 meters long and 59 meters wide carved straight through the front of the ship. 
That's enough space to slide two Airbus A380s nose to tail, wings barely clearing the steel walls on either side. This slot isn't a design flourish. It's the answer to a problem that stumped the industry for decades. How to get under a platform that's been sitting on legs in the North Sea for 40 years, then lift it away in one move. Conventional ships and cranes can only attack from the side, slicing the platform into modules small enough to handle. Pioneering Spirit does the opposite. It sails in, straddling the entire structure like a mechanical colossus, hulls parted wide, ready to envelop the target. The hull layout is pure function. Each of the twin catamaran hulls is more than 30 meters across, leaving a canyon of open water between them. The slot runs nearly a third of the ship's total length, lined with heavy steel beams and reinforced decks. This isn't just for show. The slot's geometry is matched to the footprint of North Sea platforms, with enough clearance to fit around the tallest support legs and enough width to accommodate the broadest decks ever built offshore. The opening is so vast that, seen from above, the ship looks like two super tankers fused at the stern, jaws open and waiting. The scale is hard to grasp without a comparison. Most football stadiums would fit inside the slot, with room to spare for the stands. The world's largest passenger jet, the A380, measures just 73 meters in length. The slot could swallow it whole, twice over. Even the Statue of Liberty, torch and all, could stand upright in the opening, barely brushing the steel at either end. But every meter of that slot serves a purpose. The open design allows the ship to approach a platform from any direction, even in moderate seas, and align itself with surgical precision. The hulls are packed with sensors and navigation systems, but it's the sheer geometry, the measured, engineered emptiness, that makes the impossible possible. As the ship closes in on its target, the slot becomes a gateway. In a few hours, what once took months of piecemeal demolition will be reduced to a single, colossal lift. Approaching the platform, the vessel's engines throttle back. The bow slot frames the aging structure ahead, steel and concrete framed against open water. The next challenge, holding position to the centimeter, ready for the most precise move in marine engineering. On the bridge, the ship's nerve center hums with data. Twelve thrusters, each the size of a city bus, stand ready, drawing a combined 95 megawatts of power. That's enough electricity to run a small town, all focused on one task, holding a vessel longer than four soccer fields, steady in open water. Dynamic positioning, or DP, is the technology behind this balancing act. Instead of anchors, the system uses computers, GPS, gyros, wind sensors, and laser references to keep pioneering spirit locked in place to within a few centimeters. Every second, the DP computer crunches inputs from satellites, acoustic beacons, and motion sensors, recalculating the ship's exact position and heading. If a gust hits or a current shifts, the system reacts instantly spinning thrusters, adjusting power, and sending new commands to keep the hulls aligned with the platform. Redundancy is built in at every level. There are two fully equipped navigation bridges, each in a separate fire zone, each with its own set of controls and displays. If a cable fails or a sensor goes down, backup systems take over without missing a beat. Eight radar arrays ring the vessel, feeding a 360-degree composite image to the bridge. The DP system can even fuse radar, GPS, and acoustic data to filter out noise and lock onto the platform's position, no matter the weather. Sensors mounted on the hull measure pitch, roll, and heave, giving the computers a real-time picture of the ship's every movement. Laser trackers and radio links target the platform's legs, letting the crew see relative positions down to the centimeter. If the platform shifts in the swell, the system compensates, nudging the ship back into alignment, keeping the slot perfectly framed. DP isn't just about holding still, it's about knowing exactly how to move and when not to. The thrusters can push the ship sideways, pivot on a dime, 
or counteract yaw with subtle bursts of power. In challenging seas, the system can anticipate a wave's effect before it even hits, adjusting thrust to counteract the surge. All this happens in the background, hundreds of calculations a second, invisible to anyone not watching the numbers scroll on the bridge. Every move is monitored, logged, and checked. The crew keeps a constant eye on stress thresholds, ready to intervene if a sensor flags a problem. But for most of the operation, it's the digital anchor, DP, that quietly does the heavy lifting, holding 400,000 tons of steel and machinery steady against the North Sea's shifting moods. Without it, the rest of the operation wouldn't even get started. The North Sea doesn't wait for anyone. Every topside removal starts with a race against the weather, a countdown measured in hours, not days. For pioneering spirit, the clock is set by the sea itself. The ship's motion-compensated lifting system is built to handle heavy swells, but there's a hard limit, 2.5 meters significant wave height. Anything above that, and the lift is off. Meteorologists and marine forecasters become mission control. Weeks before arrival, their models churn through satellite data, wave buoys, and wind charts, hunting for a gap. A 24-hour weather window where the sea will flatten just enough for the operation. But North Sea forecasts are never a sure thing. A system that looks perfect on Monday can turn hostile by Thursday, with low-pressure fronts stacking up like dominoes. Every hour of delay means another round of calculations, another risk that the window will slam shut. On board, the tension is constant. The lifting crew runs through dry rehearsals, while the bridge team tracks live feeds from wave radars and hull sensors. The DP system holds the vessel steady, but the sea is always moving underneath. Even a half-meter surge can throw off the alignment, shifting thousands of tons by centimeters, enough to bend steel or jam a lifting beam. The platform itself isn't immune. Decades of corrosion, hidden cracks, and old welds all become potential failure points if the sea state turns rough mid-lift. The consequences of a missed weather window aren't just financial. Each day on standby racks up costs. Crew, fuel, support vessels, and the megaship itself, burning through budgets at a rate few projects can sustain. Worse, a false start can leave a platform half-cut, exposed to storms, with structural integrity in question. The industry has learned this the hard way. In 2013, a North Sea removal campaign lost its window and spent three weeks riding out gale force winds, with cranes idle and schedules blown apart. To keep the odds in their favor, operators set strict go or no-go criteria. The final call comes from the bridge, sometimes just hours before the planned lift. If forecasted HEHS stays below 2.5 meters for the next 24 hours, the operation is a go. If not, everything pauses. The crew stands by, watching the horizon, waiting for the numbers to line up. No one blinks. When the green light comes, every system is primed. Thrusters humming, beams locked, air buffers charged. The countdown is over. The next move is irreversible. 24 hydraulic lifting beams, each weighing as much as a city bus, line up beneath the platform's steel belly. The moment arrives. In the control room, a single command arms the fast lift system. Compressed air surges into the hydraulic cylinders, 64 in total, primed to unleash 20,000 tons of upward force in a heartbeat. Sensors confirm every beam is locked on target, load cells flicker, and then the countdown drops to zero. The lift begins, not with a slow heave, but with a synchronized jolt. In just nine seconds, the entire topside, 24,200 tons, the weight of three Eiffel Towers, rises two and a half meters clear of its legs. That's faster than a city elevator, but the stakes are measured in thousands of tons. Each beam moves in perfect choreography, compensating for waves and wind, keeping the load path straight and true. The platform, after 40 years at sea, becomes airborne for the first time since launch. The physics are brutal and beautiful. 
The beams don't just lift, they react, absorbing vessel motion, holding the structure steady as the hull flexes beneath them. The load shifts from concrete legs to steel arms in a single, seamless transfer. Instruments track every millimeter, every ton, every split second. There's no second chance if the load drifts or the beams slip, but the choreography holds. In less time than it takes to pour a cup of coffee, the impossible is done. The platform is now cargo, suspended above the waves, held by a machine built for this one moment. The beams, silent and steady, have done their work. Now comes the next challenge, securing the prize for the voyage home. With the platform now suspended above the waves, the next priority is securing thousands of tons of steel for open ocean transit. The fast lift sequence might last just seconds, but the sea fastening process is a methodical, high stakes operation, one that turns a floating cargo into a rock solid load. Deck crews move quickly, guiding the topside onto its temporary supports. Custom built grillages welded to the vessel's deck. Each grillage fits the platform's footprint like a puzzle piece, engineered to spread the load evenly and absorb shocks from the ship's movement. The grillages are paired with massive sea fastening clamps and lashing systems, locking the structure in place. Even a minor shift, just a few centimeters, could overstress beams or damage the hull during the crossing. Every bolt, every weld, every tensioned cable is checked and double checked before the ship is cleared to sail. But the work isn't over at sea. On arrival, the yard team takes over. Specialized skid shoes, giant steel runners, are positioned beneath the topside. Hydraulic jacks and push-pull systems inch the platform off the vessel, sliding it onto land-based skids for dismantling. The transfer is slow, deliberate, and measured in millimeters. Each movement is tracked by sensors and overseen by engineers, ensuring no part of the 20,000-ton structure goes astray. What happens next is less visible, but just as important. At dedicated decommissioning yards, the topside is cut, sorted, and processed. Nearly all the material, 97% on recent jobs, is recycled, from structural steel down to copper cabling and pipework. The legacy of the platform is reborn as new infrastructure, closing the loop on decades of offshore production. For the crews on deck and in the yard, this is the real payoff. A safe return, a clean deck, and the knowledge that even the heaviest lift ends with a lighter footprint. In just nine seconds, pioneering spirit can lift more than 24,000 tons, an entire platform topside in a single piece. This operation, once measured in months, now takes hours, transforming offshore decommissioning across the North Sea, where hundreds of aging structures still await removal. The documentary has shown how dynamic positioning, 16 synchronized lifting beams, and a 122-meter twin bow slot enable precision and safety at an unprecedented scale. Yet, some technical details, such as proprietary motion compensation algorithms and specific platform lift schedules, remain classified by operators and shipbuilders. The long-term environmental impact of large-scale single-lift removals is still under study, but a 97% recycling rate from documented projects marks significant progress. Today, pioneering spirit stands as proof that engineering can solve complex industrial challenges with speed and accuracy. As the backlog of platforms continues, one fact is clear. The era of Megalift is here, reshaping how the world retires its offshore giants.